CDMP Q&A. This is my webinar where I will tell you everything you need to know about why you need to certify, what the process about getting registered is, and um, what the exam looks like, what it covers, and what it can do for you. And then also we'll go into a little bit about what how you how you can prepare and how we can help you if you need to have any any further training or anything else so the we at model Way systems and dama sa we look at a person's data man management journey as a big adventure uh, um, learning is lifelong it's not just formalized learning as you are working through whatever you do, you're learning. So all the time we're getting stronger, we're getting fitter, we're getting more tools in our belt to summit our mountains. And when we get people on training, we like to ask them to, to start thinking about what, what they want to be, what the top of the mountain is for them. Is it going to be a CDO? Is it going to be um, a specialist, a technical specialist in a specific area where you're the best that people know that you are. You are. Would, could you be maybe a thought leader where you um, are basically an influencer? You speak at conferences and influence people into new ways of doing things. Or would you like to, you're a people person and you'd actually like to manage a data team. So we'll guide people throughout their careers towards their whatever their summit is, which is why I've got this really excited looking guy on the top. Um, and these are different areas that we could be, we could be helping you in to become a CDMP master. OK, Certified Data Management Professional is what CDMP stands for. It comes from uh, DEMA International. Um, DEMA International is the umbrella body for all of our chapters. So these are the questions that I'm going to answer. These are uh, probably what you have in mind as questions. What is a certified data management professional? What does a CDMP do? Um, or what does the CDMP certification do for me? Why is it necessary to get one? Um, who should be, who should consider getting the certi certification? Is it right for me? And then it's what does taking the exam, getting uh, uh, the, the CDMP exam involve? So um, it's bad English. Who else? Should who else? Uh, what else should you know about this? So think of any questions you want to ask. I am going to answer all of these um, in this presentation. But please interrupt me if you want to know anything. I'm very happy to be interrupted. So um, when we think about a professional, professional is it's it's not just a worker. Professional is somebody who takes takes pride in what they do in um, a very specific capacity. OK, you can be a worker and take pride in what you do, or then maybe you're you're going for that that kind of professional mindset. Um, you get you may have a, a, a academic qualifications uh, to be a professional. It's not 100 percent necessary, but it's one of those those things. The definition of a professional usually means you've had some further study. While you're working as a professional, you can earn these other kinds of credentials, these other kind of certifications, such as the CDMP for data management or a TOGAF for architecture, data architecture or an MCSE for Microsoft cert, uh, Certified Systems Engineer, those kind of things. Um, so we're going to be talking about this particular professional credential, the CDMP. What you have to do for the full CDMP is pass three exams. The first exam is called the core exam. It's the data management fundamentals exam. And if you only do that, you'll get something called a CDMP associate, which is not the full CDMP. It's it's a bit like a CDMP light. Um, it's, it still means that you are a certified data management professional, but after three years it expires and you'll have to rewrite. Um, we have to pass, we have to do two specialist exams in addition to the core exam. And those are the specialist exams in the, in, in the areas in which you are working as a data management professional. 
If you were a data citizen, for example, somebody like a finance person who uses data, you can do the certified, certified data management professional, and then you would only take it to the, the first level, the core exam, because you're not a specialist in any of the areas. And that just demonstrates that a data citizen has more than a, is, is more than data literate. They've got much more knowledge than a data man, uh, um, of, of the way data, data management areas fit together. So there are four levels of CDMP certification, but they are not a progression. Um, it depends on the score that you get in the exam. If you score, uh, the pass mark is 60%. If you score under 60, you failed. If you get between 60 and 69, you get awarded a CDMP associate certification. You'll get a badge, which you can share on, on, on LinkedIn. And I'm not sure that they give you a, a certificate. You may get a certificate. I'm not sure about that. If you do your three exams and you score between 70 and 79% in all three exams, you get awarded a CDMP practitioner, which is the professional credential. It's, um, you'll get a certificate from DAMA International and you'll get a whole lot of badges from badger.io, which the, the CDMP site is linked to. I'll, I'll show you that online. Uh, if you score over 80 and above in all three exams, and you have got over 10 years of experience, you have to upload your CV to, to prove that you have over 10 years of experience. You can be awarded a CDMP master. So the master level over 80% and above, but also a, a, a really bright beginner can't be a master because of the experience, um, the, the necessity to demonstrate your experience. And then there's a fellow, which is a, an honorary certification. I've put the levels in here. Having a look again, the CDMP associate. These industry experience. Yes, Ashish. Uh, yeah, sorry, Veronica. Just for the clarity. Uh, so, irrespective of the score I get in the data management fundamentals exam, mm -hmm. I would still be awarded a CDMP associate uh, uh, label or badge, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Okay, it's only okay. when I complete the other two uh, exams, uh, uh, then only I will be awarded as either pet practitioner or uh, a master. Yes, depending on the school. Asking that that clarifies it for everyone. That's exactly okay. right. So if, if you take your your core exam, your DM fundamentals, and you get eighty five percent, they award mm -hmm. you the CDMP associate because you've okay. met the gotcha. requirements. Gotcha. They'll also give you a badge that says. A data management fundamentals practitioner pass because you meet the requirements. I think it's just that automated thing. And then they'll award you a badge that says data management fundamentals master pass. And then obviously that's the one you'd like to share on LinkedIn. Um, and as the same with all the other exams, the specialist exams, they'll give you an associate pass, a practitioner pass and a master pass. But we need to collect our, our practitioner passes and master passes for the full certification. Um, you also don't have to do your exams in any order. You can do the specialist exams first if you want, but no normally people take the data management fundamentals, the core exam first. It's said to be easier than the, the um, specialist exams. And it's also, it puts everything into perspective because it's over all the knowledge areas. Um, within the, the cost, each exam costs $311. $300 is for the exam and the $11 is for the online proctoring service called Unalock. So um, to get your all your three exams is going to cost you $933 in total. Um, the $300 has got the central membership included. So when you first purchase your exam, you will be you get eligibility for being a DAMA International Central membership member. The DAMA International Central membership is is separate from our chapter membership. Each chapter uh, each chapter is autonomous, and each chapter has its own membership requirements and um, its own benefits for the members. 
So Dame Essential membership, the benefits there are you will get um, discount on their conferences that they host. You'll get discount on the courses um, that are run by Dataversity. And um, you also get 10% uh, discount at uh, Technics Pub and at, um, I can't remember the other, the other publisher, the one that publishes John Ladley's works. So there's two on, um, online publishers that you get 10% discount. Um, we've actually been able, as, as Model Way Systems, we've been able to get a 20% discount from Steve Hoberman's uh, Technics Pub. So if you want a discount, if you're going to buy anything from Technics Pub, apart from the DM Bok, um, then you must apply Modelware as your coupon code and you'll get 20% discount. Yes, Johan. Um, sorry, Veronica, just a quick question. If you already have central membership, um, does the cost of the exam then come down um, because of that, or is it the same? It's the same. Uh, yeah. Uh, that hasn't been made clear to us. We actually brought that up to say it includes central membership, which is $50, but then we're going to be buying another exam and another exam. So what about that? And um, they haven't brought the price down and they haven't said anything about it. So maybe it's something that Howard must, uh, Howard must, let me just make a note of that. Um, because he has his, he, as the, the, the DEMA essay president, mm. he has president's council meeting. So I think they do need to clarify that because charging people $150 for the in total is not fair. Okay, I made a note of that. Um, yeah, so there's no and there's no discount they, they don't offer any discounts for anybody for any reason the only time you pay less is if you're doing a rewrite if you if you you take the the dm fundamentals and say you get like 79 percent and you think gee i want my master pass i'm going to i'm going to bite the bullet and rewrite that's 211 dollars it's a it's a hundred dollars cheaper um this industry experience here in all of them, in these two, is just a guideline. You don't have to prove any industry experience, but the CDMP master, you do have to upload your CV to, to um, verify your 10 years of experience. The CDMP fellow is, is an honorary, it's, it's awarded by DEMA International. You can't apply or anything like that. Um, John Zachman is one of those. I think Christopher Bradley is one of those. Deborah Henderson. Um, I think there are only about five or six people who are fellows at the moment anyway. So here you have to get the data management fundamentals, two special exams on 70% and, um, and on 80% all three. So if you get if you get two exams in the 70s and one in, in with 80, you'll still only get the practitioner. You have to get all three on 80 to get the master. OK. I um, don't think I have to tell you any more about that. Oh, yes, you've got three years in which to complete all your three exams. Because it's tied to the central membership, um, your first exam is going to expire after three years. So then you need to collect your other, your, your, your other, uh, other two exams by that stage. And um, it's it's a long time, and we would recommend that when you decide to certify, you know, you 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 take prioritize it and just get those exams done um, as quickly as possible. Um, so doing getting the CDMP certification usually doesn't change your your job, but it does make you more marketable. Because it is internationally recognized, if you want to do any kind of, of international work, it's, it, it, it shows employers that you have that, that understanding of data management and that you're a committed person, you're committed to your professional development and, and you're committed to understanding. It, it's, not, it's knowledge across all the knowledge areas. It's a broad knowledge. Um, Often jobs applications, job advertisements say 
CDMP would be preferable. So that helps. And um, if your organization is tendering, having certified people on the, ten on, on the team it also helps. Um, at master level is recognized. And um, why it's necessary? We've found that the universities are lagging behind in the appreciation of data management as, as, a, as a discipline. Most academic institutions still have data management under your computer science degree. The business, the, the, the business, the, the commerce faculties say it's IT. Why should we, why should we do data management? And, and we, we, we are desperately trying to get into some of these in, institutions to try and, and educate these professors in that data is a business resource. The data is a business asset. And um, the DM Bach stresses this, that everything that IT does needs to be driven by business requirements. And so therefore it should be it should be offered in the business degree, not in it's it's not just a technical thing. So um, CDMP addresses this. We don't have in, we have no academic institutions validating these levels of data management experience. And unfortunately, because DEMA did not attach themselves to an academic institution and get the CDMP verified by an academic institution, I can't get an MQF level. So we're trying to get uh, somehow trying to get CDMP and, and, and uh, training towards the CDMP put into some one of our CETAs or something like that so that it will be easier for for um, the skills development levy to pay for it. But that's that's a project on its own. And apparently people who have tried to do that find it it's it's very daunting. Um, yeah, worldwide, it opens doors for employment and especially if you want to be a consultant, it, it makes people more um, companies more uh, more secure about hiring you as a consultant consultant. So that's why it's necessary. Who should get a CDMP certification? Definitely data management professionals in any of the knowledge areas are the prime candidates for um, certification. And, and we like to say that the, the foundational knowledge areas such as data quality, data governance, um, metadata, if you're a if if you're a technical person, getting one of those specialist specialist exams is also really really good because they're foundational for any of your data management knowledge. Um, the leaders should lead by example. Uh, a CDO, our CDOs should get certified. Any of our managers, data managers, leading by example, setting that the the tone for data management in the organisation. And then we've got our business data stewards and citizens, and we encourage them to certify as well so that it shows their, their strong level of data literacy. Um, what you need to know about the exams. Everything is based on the DMBOK version 2, this one. You need to have your own copy because the exams are open book. And see what I've done with mine. I've tagged all the, all the chapters so it's easy for me to look up. If you um, are a book person like I am, I know my book well. And to do an exam, people have also put tags on the top for places where they know it would be something to look up, like the types of metadata or the data quality dimensions. You put tags there so you can easily open it and look up. It's also available on Technic, uh, uh, as a PDF, which you can get via uh, technicspub.com, that's $59.95, immediate download. You have to pay with a credit card though. Um, the, uh, and uh, large organizations can get an enterprise version. So if you work for one of the big South African banks, you've definitely got access to the enterprise version. Uh, and then you don't have to buy it, you just need to, to get your own PDF from the person who administers it. Um, the book itself, you can get it on Amazon. You can get it in South Africa on Take A Lot or Loot, but it takes to between two and three weeks to get there. So I've got a small stash 
and um, at Modelway Systems. You can get them from me for 1610 which includes the, the, delivery, the delivery fees. Get it, once I receive a payment, you can get it to your door within two or three days. So that's the options, but you have to have one. You need it. It's an open book exam. Um, the, the, it, you can have notes in the exam. You can have your DM box. You can have study notes. I've got summaries that I make for my training. You can have those um, open. If you've got a PDF, you have to have it on a separate device. So the, the, the device that you're writing your exam on has to be a standalone machine with an integrated camera and microphone. You, it has to run Google Chrome and you have to download it on a lock extension. So if it's your work laptop, you may have to get your IT people to, to put the honor lock extension in. The honor lock monitors the primary machine. So when you do your exam, it's best not to have any other windows open, just your exam. And um, because honor lock monitors your machine, it, it asks you, it's, it asks you to take a picture of your face and a picture of your photo ID, and it asks for a room scan, but it's just really to check that you're alone. So you take your laptop and you do a room scan. Um, because it's open book, your desk does not have to be clean. Um, I've had my phone on the desk because I used it as a timer and it's, it, it wasn't a problem. Um, it, it watches you through the exam and it asks you to share your screen. So it actually records, uh, I believe it records your movement. It doesn't actually record what you're putting on your screen. It records the movement through the exam. So if there's some kind of a disaster or you get stuck, they can look at the recording and see what happened. And I had, I had one person who, who didn't finish and got something like 40%. And, and this person we expected to do really well. And what had happened in the exam when we looked at the honor lock recording is she must have panicked and frozen because the recording just said that she sat there staring at the screen doing nothing for 10 minutes. And um, it can tell if something like that has happened. It can tell um, if, if you've had a technical failure. So for example, if we have a power failure, in, in the middle of the exam, then you must email support at tdmp.info immediately or get hold of me immediately and we'll make sure that you get a rewrite. But as long as you report it immediately to the support people, um, your PDF has to be on another device and that other device can be a laptop or an iPad, but you have to do your exam on a laptop. Um, when you study, oh, there's chapters with 10 or 11 questions. I've got this slide here. The, there are 100 questions in the exam, and there are 100 questions in all of the exams. The specialist exams look exactly like the the DM Fundamentals core exam. They're all on the same platform. They all are 100 questions. Um, they usually, they're supposed to be a, a choice of five multiple choice choice of five they're not supposed to be true and false questions but there are some they're not supposed to be um too many which is not or which is false and you have to look at the negative but there are some so you have to just be aware that there are some discrepancies to this now 50 percent of the questions should be very easy they should be the ones that a, a, a person a 60% pass should have no difficulty with. And one of the five is obviously right. And the answer can be found directly in the book. Now, they, they're not trying to test your English. So they don't use synonyms. They don't paraphrase anything. They quote exactly from the book when they ask the question. And the answers are quoted directly from the book. So definitions will be exactly the same as in the book. Lists will be exactly the same as in the book, such as your lists of metadata, types of metadata. They'll ask you um, data models, data roles and responsibilities, and something else or what type of metadata. And that you'll find those word for word in the book. So um, it's easy to look those up. 25% of, of the questions are more challenging they might have alternatives, which means that more than one is right, 
maybe even all five are right. And you've got to use your experience and your knowledge to choose the one that's most right. Uh, the, all of the above is the easy one, but they're not always like that. You, they may be, they, they may all be right in a sense, but there's one that's more right than, than the others. And then there's 25% are those really challenging ones to distinguish masters. And those are usually referring to other knowledge areas or they scenario based where you have to apply your knowledge and you can't directly look up in the book. But everything is based on the book. Every exam question has to have it has to be referenced back to the DM box. So it will always be there. The first edition is not is no longer. Um, it's still valuable for your work, but the questions are all based on the second edition. So you need to have your second edition. Some things are different. The knowledge area names, they've added another knowledge area as well. Um, the questions here, uh, the different chapters here have got a different amount of questions that are, that are, that the exam engine offers. Now there, there's a very large pool of questions and the exam engine will pick out of the pool and will deliver them in knowledge area groups. So you're going to get all of your data governance questions. All 11 questions will come together as a group and then it will give you maybe the, the data architecture group of questions. I'm not sure if that's the order that this order or it's another order. I honestly didn't pay attention when I was doing the exam, but the questions all come in groups. So it's easy for you to be in that mindset when you're answer, answering those questions. And you see some are, are heavy and some are light. So when you're preparing, Spend more time on the ones that there are more questions, governance, modeling, master data, warehousing, uh, metadata and data quality. Um, it, within the, that group of 10 or 11 questions, they're going to be that same weighting. The five or six easy ones, the two or three more difficult ones and the two really difficult ones. And then once you have your three exams at the master level, that's the kind of certificate you get issued with, and that's your badge that you can share. And oh, take note here, the DM Bach has got 17 chapters. Chapter 15, 16 and 17 aren't in this exam. They are examined in the data governance specialist exam, so you don't have to study them for the data management fundamentals exam. OK, DEMA International in South Africa. Um, I'm sure you all know about DEMA International, how it was founded in the in the 1980s by John Zachman and some other people. It's the it's the umbrella organization for all our chapters. It's it's to support data management professionals. And back there in the 1980s, John Zachman and those thought leaders realized that data was so important that they needed to have an organization to support. So um, here's the website for DEMA Southern Africa, DEMA.org.za. And if you want to become a member, it's 350 Rand per person per year. One of the benefits of being a DEMA Southern Africa member is we are offering a benefit to our members if you pay for yourself in, for your exam. If your company is not sponsoring you and you actually have to contribute out of your own pockets for your exam, we're offering those members a cashback reward. If you pass on the associate level, we will give you a thousand rand back. If you pass on the practitioner level, 70 to 79, we will give you 2,000 rand back. And if you pass on the master level, we will give you 4,000 rand back. And this promotion is going to, we, we've assigned a pool. I think we've, we've assigned a, I can't remember how much we've assigned. We've assigned a pool of money and it's until that money runs out. And as um, of now, I've only had one person claiming. So if you're going to be paying for yourself, and, and even if you're in Australia or in Egypt or whatever, join us. Damer.org.za. 350 Rand is nothing. It's like $22. And, and you can get that cashback reward, we, which we will give you. Um, sure. Thanks, Rita. <laughs> the pleasure. So participating online, um, that's our online preparation for your exam. Th that's your, on, your ongoing learning. Um, you can you can connect to Howard Diesel on LinkedIn and Debbie 
post all our events on LinkedIn or Meetup so that you can participate in our, our DAMA SA meetings and African Data for Management Co Community Forum meetings. You can get lots of, of good online training there. And the Meetup groups are data, the data governance, a data governance focused meeting, data modeling focused meeting, data privacy focused meeting, and a big data focused meeting. And then we, we have our, we, our monthly chapter meeting, which we, we really want to get um, international speakers to. Who's, who's speaking for February, Debs? Um, we have uh, Doug Laneley speaking on the 16th and Liesl Engel, uh, Engelbrecht, she's speaking for Big Data and Data Science. I think that's the 21st. Um, yeah, and then we have Marco Wobben in uh, March. And um, yeah, I'm still securing some March um, speakers. Fantastic. So you, you, you can you can hear South African people and international people at our meetings. And if, if you want to be that um, influencer, thought leader type of person who wants to speak at conferences, and you've got some kind of use case to share how you've solved some real business problems using data management techniques and you want to share it on one of our platforms it's good practice for the international stage because the the the, the south african data community is is very gentle and very kind and very encouraging so get hold of debbie then if you want to present at one of our forums she's always looking for speakers and, and that, that will be a good thing that's also training. Okay, exam technique. This is so important. When you take your exam, it, there's 100 questions. If English is your first language, you get 90 minutes, an hour and a half. If English is not your first language, there's an English as a second language version, which gives you another 20 minutes. It's the same exam, just extra time. You get 110 minutes. Don't be tempted to look up while you're going through the exam. You're going to run out of time. I've seen this. I've seen this in the online when we had when we had in person exams. I've seen people run out of time. Run through the exam with on what you know. There's a little flag on each one of those exam questions. I'll show you just now. Little flag. You can flag your question and come back to it. But you can guess because there's no negative marking. You have a one in five chance of being right, even if you co completely clueless. So try and run through fairly quickly. If you get stuck thinking about a question, flag it, guess it, move on. If there's a lot of reading and, and your, your English is not your first language and reading English is, is slow, because some of them do have a lot of reading, even in the distractors, that they, they're not nice questions, flag it, guess it, move on. Uh, try and do those 100 questions within an hour or maybe 70 minutes. And um, after that, then you've got another half an hour to do your looking up, jump to your flag questions and look up. You've got to, you've got to be careful of words like always and never. Sometimes they throw those in to trick you because there may be an exception. So most of the time something is true, but not always. And if they use that word always, it's probably one of those distractors that you need to eliminate. Eliminate your distractors that are obviously wrong, so you only have to think about maybe two or three alternatives. If you see that false or not, then you must just reassign your thinking that you're actually looking for the one that doesn't fit. It's, um, especially when you are going fast through, just make sure that they will put it in capital letters so that you, you will recognize that this is now a, a negative type of question. And beware of that double negative. That starts to get uh, bends anyone's brain. Um, the, it's recorded. If there's a technical problem, please report it to support at dama.info. I mean, yeah, support at cdmp.info, or even me, and 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 we'll get we'll make sure that you get you you get the support you need. Okay, these are the specialist exams. Hey, Veronica. Yes, yes. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, going back to the previous slide, sure. uh, I didn't really understand uh, about the d double negative. Uh, can you please elaborate on that statement? Uh, uh, yes. And it's when you ask a question, uh, we're looking for something that's not true. 
and then they'll put another knot in one of the distractors. And then you have to, it's, it's, it's when they try, you're looking for something that's not true and they, they use that word not or false or, or something like that within the distractors. So um, think, yeah, they can just be very tricky. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, thank you. Thanks for the explanation. Okay, I hope I explained it properly. Um, these are the, the available specialist exams now at the moment. Data architecture is still in progress and I'm, I'm not sure what else they're doing. Um, so you have to pick two. I've done governance quality and modeling. Um, um, Howard's done warehousing and he got a master pass from that. So he, he said it was okay. So if anyone does anything else, please let me know how the exam was as well. Um, we've got recommended reading for for the specialist exams, um, as well as we can we can recommend training. But if you if you want to just do it via extra reading or both, we've got a a, a list of of um, a, a spreadsheets of extra reading which Debbie can send to you. And the, if it's from Technics Pub, you can get that twenty percent discount. DEMA International Membership only gives you 10%. So we've got a better relationship with Steve Hoberman. Uh, use our, our company name as the, the coupon code. A recertification. After three years, your certification expires. You won't have to rewrite if you've got the practitioner and the master. There's a recertification process that hasn't been made completely clear, but we understand that you're going to have to pay about $100, $50 for your central membership again, and $50 for the admin fee of recertifying you. And um, it's going to include some kind of proof that you have been involved in, in professional development, you've been involved in chapter activities. So attending our webinars is really easy to get your professional development um, hours in because they, they are chapter activities. And we keep it, the teams will, will keep a record of who's attended. And when you need to upload it, um, it's, it would be very easy for, for us to be able to send you a, a record of your attendance. Other things that you do could, could be is presenting at the webinars, um, any other service to the data management community, and helping with the exam setting teams. So after three years, 30 hours is not much and then they will renew your certification for another three years. Um, so if you, if you want to do any training with us for any of these exams, any of the, uh, the specialists and the um, data management fundamentals, I just had a course on data management fundamentals where this is how I w went through all the days. Um, I've got a four day course on that, to prepare you for the fundamentals. And the, the helpful thing about that is we get through the whole book. You get um, summary notes that I've ma made, you know, like the, the, um, the study guide. And we also do, uh, I've got practice questions, which we do as a, a study group. Um, we've got these how-to courses, which Howard has written, Howard runs, for all of these up to master and reference. We're still busy working on data quality metadata and data literacy. He's giving data architecture next week, data, um, data, how to, how to analyze data, the warehousing BI and data science, end of the month and then governance next month. I think modeling's in April. So you can get hold of, of Debbie if you want to do any of these other courses or you want more information about our, our courses. Debbie will be able to help you with all that information. You don't have to attend training to write exams, but it's helpful. And now how to courses actually how, help you how to do your job because the DM box tells you what to do. The context diagrams are a very good checklist of the activities and deliverables, but it doesn't tell you anything about how you do them. Um, and our, my exam cram course, I don't have time for that either. We just go through the DM box, what you need to know, what they're going to ask in the exam and, and how we do it. So that's what we do in, in study group. We, we revise all the chapters. I've, I've written lots and lots and lots of practice questions, but um, we try to get people to write the exam within six weeks of when they decide to. 
And um, we're also doing a pre-exam refresher course for $74 per person. It's going to take a whole Saturday. And I'm doing uh, one, I think, every second month. The 26th of February, I'm going to do the first one. And then I'll do it every second month. It's an exhausting day. But we go through, um, we go through, we sort of spot where we might have questions. And we, we go through each of those knowledge areas really, really quickly. And we do lots of practice questions. And then you can see how you're doing. Um, and um, that's about it. That's our assessment. Let me quickly show you the platform of where you register. Um, you register here on cdmp.info. And um, it's tell that about certification will tell you what I've just told you. About the exams is where you book an exam. Here's where we submit a master experience and um, the conversion is now an old thing. It, it was for people that had certified on DMBOK 1, but that conversion is now closed. Um, so book an exam. That's all online. So you need to be disciplined and you need to schedule your exam date with yourself because it's no longer you book an appointment and you have to arrive to write your exam. You have to do this with yourself. So I, I advise you to book yourself a date where you're going to do your exam. Um, and before you even do, part of setting yourself up is to purchase your exam. When you purchase the exam, it doesn't mean you have to do it right away. It's just setting yourself up. So here you click on purchase. And um, this is where you choose the standard or the English as a second language. If English is your mother tongue, you will do the standard version. They, they they just rely on a person's honesty in this. They don't actually go and check. Um, but if if your mother tongue is not English, even if it's Afrikaans, Johan, English as a second language, you take it. Um, so if we click that, we add to the order and it adds into a, a cart. So there you go, it's in your cart. And um, if you're paying for yourself, you'll fill in your details here it's a good idea to put your personal email because once you're in this exam platform, it's your personal exam journey for the rest of your career. And if you use your work email, then you're going to have to go and change it. So with the exam, use your personal email, your country, and um, that's all you need to do. And then you pay uh, by, by credit card, the usual kind of sort set, set up and place an order. Now, if your company sponsored you, and um, I've purchased your exam and you've got an exam coupon. Here, you, I need to add a coupon code. You add that in and apply your coupon there and it zeroes your cards. And then you go through the um, those, those steps of putting your name and your email in. OK, and then when when you pay for it, it gives you it, it says download enrollment instructions. You need to download a P, that PDF and it gives you enrollment instructions to the exam platform, which is cdmp.instructure.com. And um, you set yourself up with your login with your personal email, not like me. I've got my work email, but um, it's our company. So kind of excusable in that way. But yeah, you should be using your personal email. And then you will find um, on mine, I'm going to find nothing because I haven't, I've, I've written all my exams. But because you've just purchased an exam, you'll find it put here as a, as a little tile. Um, I, I wonder if I can see my history. That's part of my history. And then it, it, it might bring that up as a tile. No, if you click on your tile, you're going to come up with this. Now, this screen here gives you access to the practice exam. The, the, it's only a practice exam for the DM fundamentals. It's only 40 questions, but the timing is the same as the main exam. And it's not all the knowledge areas, but it helps you to prepare for the exam. Um, if you want a whole lot more practice questions, you can do my, my training or that pre-exam refresher. I've got a lot more practice questions which we can do together. When you are ready to take the exam, that's your take the exam button. And this thing here, test on a lock here, that will, will test 
whether your system is ready for the exam. And then if it's not, you can get that ready so that when the time comes for you to take the exam, you're 100 percent set up and you don't have technical problems. The first thing, if I press that now, is it, it would tell me to remove my second screen. Um, the rules for Unlock is no earphones, no hats. Um, and but ladies, if 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 you're Muslim and you have to wear a hijab, hijabs are fine. So um, that that's about on a lock. Um, and the other thing is your badges. It links to badger.io, and it tracks your your progress through to CDMP Master on your badges. Oh, that's weird. My account should tell me my badges. Uh, my badges. Um, you also get a sign on to badger.io. And so it shows. You see, remember I told you when you pass on the master level, you get three badges. So there it's showing my badges for the data management fundamentals. Um, the, the data governance, if you if you pass on the with the master level, you get all three badges as well. OK, is there any anything else you need to know? I'll just log on to badger.io while we're talking. I must say you scored really well in your exams, uh, Veronica. <laughs> yeah. um, so how about the um, the quality of the questions in the practice test exam uh, on the Dharma side? Yes, they they um, they supposed to be exact exam questions. I noticed I noticed two of them in the main exam, so they're they're a sub pool of the exam questions, but. Um, mm -hmm. it, they 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 we noticed that some of them were old some of them were dmbok one questions but they they help you to understand the types of questions um this is just right. shows how badger show tracks your progress when you you do your first exam there's your associate and then it tracks the progress to practitioner and it pra tracked my progress to master and then i had to upload my my um, experience and finally it was verified. So it, it's it's very it's a very nice process. And the exams are they're not tricky. They they mostly not tricky. They they're nice exams. 